All right, welcome back to the channel. So this will be the last video in a series about my Raspberry Pi rack that I designed and 3D printed. Um, all the parts except for this here assembly have been released so far. Uh, so today you'll get the full assembly that has all of the all of the the designed parts and the Raspberry Pis and other components and things um, as part of this. So you can see I've modeled out you know the little OLED screens, the Raspberry Pi screen, all of the fans and all of that in here. So. Uh, you'll be able to play around with this before you build it and uh, see what you like, see what you don't like, etc. Um, anyway, so today is going to be the release of this. Um, and I've got some footage of my assembly as well as some tips and pointers that I will uh, throw in this video as well. Um, so anyway, I, uh, I hope you've been following along. If you haven't, um, I would encourage you to start with video one. Uh, again, that was my first YouTube video, so be gentle. Um, you know, I'm still trying to figure it all out. Uh, anyway. Uh, so without further ado, let's go ahead and hop into this thing. Um, I'll, I'll go ahead and, and show you some of the joints real quick as part of this so we can uh, kind of talk about some of the components and things like that. So as you can see, there's quite a few joints. There's a whole lot of screws and, and things like that. Um, let's take a look at, for instance, this one. You know, we can go ahead and open that. I think it's 110 like that. Maybe it's minus 110. There we go. Cool. So as you can see, you can go in here and I've got all my components assembled and things like that. So I'm gonna do the same for this one. Okay, so you can see I have the Raspberry Pis and all their, their racked components here. And then each of these trays also slide out so you can grab, for instance, that one, pull that thing out. Um, and you can, you know, zoom in and take a look at fitment and, you know, figure out what you wanna do for yours. Anyway, so this component today will be published out on Colts and uh, I encourage you to give it a look. Um, without, you know, any, uh, any further ado, let's go ahead and, uh, look at the videos that I've got as far as assembly. So I hope that helps you. Um, anyway, if you, uh, if you are not a member of my discord server, I would suggest that you join that. Um, you know, it's a, it's a relatively small community thus far, but we're just getting started. So, um, yeah, there's a link to that in the description of this video. Um, anyway, thanks. All right. So here are the assembled blades. Um, the next step in the process is we're going to cable up the power and Ethernet for these. So we'll have power come out the, the side here, and then we'll have Ethernet come out. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to have them loop around and make a kind of a, a bundle so that when I try to pull the blades out of the rack, I have enough slack on the cables in order to be able to do that. So you'll see what I'm talking about here in a few minutes when you actually get a look at that. All right, so here are the eight blades all wired up all of that's going to go inside that thing um you know of course most of that nastiness you see on the table is network cable and a lot of that's going to be cable managed as part of the uh assembly there but you can see here what i've got i have my cable loop around here both of them kind of come together here and then i i um, tie them together with some velcro the reason being is when you pull this thing out it'll actually pull this a little more tight at the back kind of like that and allow you to, um, you know, be able to pull the blade out of the rack. Uh, allows you to get the SD card and stuff like that. All right, so we have a finished rack. Um, as you can see, all the modules are in place. Um, I even have the bottom section assembled here. Uh, you know, I assembled the uh, wire looms on each one of these things, so I had a little bit of uh, slack to be able to pull those things out. And as you can see, it works pretty well. All the way down the rack. Of course, the magnets help keep those face plates in. Now, you can see none of those moved. Of course, the magnets hold this in as well. That all looks pretty good there in the top. And then we turn around to the back. So back here, you can see all the wires are all held. So you've got Velcro all the way down the back here on both sides. So power on that side and of course, you can see the wire loops in each one of those, and then networking on this side, and it all comes out the bottom. So I'll put the back plates on this, and it'll be ready to plug in and uh, configure. All right, so as you can see, I have the rack powered up now. Um, each of these are powered on. You can see I've got fans running in the top. Got power going to that guy. Um, so all of them are wired up. I'll show you a little video of some of that here in a minute. And of course, those all cable into my Microtech over here. 
So network upgrade is done. I can start focusing on some Kubernetes stuff now. Um, as you can see, I don't have any dashboarding going on with this just yet. Uh, since I did a complete rebuild of, of Kubernetes, I lost my Grafana dashboards, but um, that was kind of intentional to an extent because I wanted to redo them. But um, yeah, everything, everything turned out great. So uh, let's take a look at what I've got running on this so far. All right, so now the rack is online. Uh, I want to show you what I've got running on that at the moment, and we can talk a little bit about what's coming next. So let's take a look at this. So this is the management cluster up here at the top. And as you can see, I've got quite a few things running on that. So, you know, fleet agent, um, you know, the pass config that I'm using for, uh, well, actually, that's actually an error state, but uh, we're not going to worry about that. I'll dig into that a little bit later. Anyway, uh, point is, this is what I'm using essentially as a kind of a control plane for the other cluster that I've got down here. So, um, yeah, this is running Rancher on K3s. Um, it's fully provisioned by Ansible script. So literally I take a, you know, off the shelf Ubuntu, uh, 2004 image, deploy my script to it and it's done. Um, this is created the same way. And then I join it to Rancher and Rancher takes it from there. So let's talk about what's running on this. And of course this management, uh, cluster is going to run a couple other things. So in particular, I'm going to run HashiCorp vault and cert manager. Right now I have cert manager deployed to this cluster. I'm eventually going to pull it into this one and integrate vault and cert manager to do all of my, uh, secrets management in one place. Um, so if we take a look at this, you can see, I've got a number of things running here. So I've got, for instance, um, you know, the alert manager, Prometheus, Grafana, uh, I've got, uh, Home Assistant, uh, Mosquito, um, Pi-hole, Ring MQTT. I've got uh, a number of different things running on this uh, in, in services, essentially, right? So uh, I actually run my DNS through this, and uh, I've got that mapped using Metal LB. So I'm running a number of different things on this, and we'll dive into that later. Um, it will not be part of this video. So anyway, this is just kind of an overview of, of what I've got running on that so far. Now... Going forward, you know, this series is pretty much at an end. Um, you know, the next series that I'm going to focus on is, you know, how do I use Kubernetes? And, uh, you know, what what do I run on that? As well as how do I configure it? Um, so look forward to, uh, I look forward to publishing that as I, as I film it and record it and go through um, all my code and things like that. So I think it'll be pretty cool. I hope you uh, stay tuned for that and uh, participate.